Welcome to the Table Leadership Podcast, where everyone is invited to pull up a seat and all leaders have a voice to contribute to the conversation. We're glad you could join us today. And now, your host, Sion Edgerton. Thank you so much for being here. I think this is probably, um, it's really special for me because I've got my uncle on with us today. Uh, I think it's pretty, pretty amazing to be part of a family where um, I can, I can reach just within my own family line and find, you know, people who are leading out in amazing ways and um, be able to have them on. And so Steve, you have over the years just impacted my leadership significantly in so many different ways. Mm. I've still got my notebook from that one trip that we made up where we stood at your counter talking stuff and I was jotting down notes and I I still Mm. have that. And so I just appreciate that. And I'm excited to get to share that with everybody now. So welcome. Thank you so much. Um, And uh, why don't you do us a favor and just kind of introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, that was super kind and made me really go right back in time. And I do remember right where we were standing. And I think I remember you even saying, hold it, stop right there. I got to go grab something. And you, <laughs> you ran back and like, okay, let's keep going kind of thing. And it's, uh, it was, yeah, it was a really, really rich moment and a lot of fun uh, to do that. So yeah, it's great to be here. Um, you know, i have uh, um, you know, I'm 53 years old, have had lots of life experiences and lots of other mentors. So it's just amazing to be in a place where you feel like you're contributing uh, outward ever at all. And, um, and you know, this season of my life, um, you know, we've launched a new company in the last four years, Jordan River Group, and focusing on um, all the different ways that we can um, encourage and grow um, leaders. Uh, and uh, and really what I find is just standing on top of all the shoulders of, of the people that have impacted me in, 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 you know, different stages as well. I had the opportunity just recently to share my resume. It was kind of a academia type of a situation. And the first, the first copy I sent, it was like my most recent one. And you know, I'm 53. So it was like four things on there kind of like, and they said, no, we want your full resume. And then when I turned it in, they said, this is, this is a resume of the person that had the most jobs ever in their life that were the most diverse. I said, I know, I know, I know, I know. And they're like, so what's the formula there? And I said, just richness, just rich opportunities to, to work under some amazing people and then just keep collecting, right? Just Mm -hmm. keep collecting. And then, um, you know, just God has this way of saying, um, it, you know, uh, you know, now there's a time when I, you know, I, I need you to serve and support as well. So uh, live in, you know, the Ann Arbor, Michigan area. We've traveled a lot. I'm married, have a daughter. Um, and uh, so we've had a lot of neat voyages as well. But I'm from Michigan and we're back in Michigan for the last 10 years. And that's a lot of fun as well. And um And our company serves all the way across the United States, really. We have clients all over the place um, and we do a lot of virtual work and, and, uh, and then travel as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's great to be on with you for sure. Awesome. I'm excited. I already have two questions based off of what I was just hearing you say. So we'll get to that in a minute, though. The first thing that I want to ask, and I know that you listen to the podcast sometimes, and so you're ready for this one. You're expecting this. But if we were um, not virtual, if we were gathered in person right now with a bunch of leaders to invest in them and develop them, what would you be feeding us? Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's a, so, such a cool question. And I, it's my favorite part of listening to you because I'm like always liking like what kind of insight will we get from this person? Right. And it's all, it's been so diverse, you know? Um, but I think my twist on it is, is, um, maybe a little bit less about the food. I'll share that with you, but more, I'm just such a, um, an environment setting person that Mm. makes a difference on the food. And so I'll, I'll, the first thing I'll say is I love appetizers Mm -hmm. more than I love entrees. (laughs) And so my perfect gift is always like three or four awesome, unique appetizers. And then we're going to stand around an island and just do this thing right with food. So, um, and that's what I love and and a little less formal. I mean, I like big Thanksgiving tables with everybody too, but I really like what you're probably even remembering is standing around and, 
you know, snacking on some things, talking and, and that sort of thing. But I do have a couple of really good favorite recipes. I have a uh, jalapeno, a cheese jalapeno bacon wrap that's like really great. That sounds and then good. also a um, a brown sugar. These are super healthy things, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing myself. I'm like, okay, I'm a, a former wellness uh, director, right? And it's like, okay, we're going off here. But but also a really uh, a, a super good um uh, 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 sausage brown sugar uh, appetizer. It's a link sausage rolled in and uh, brown sugar. That's just out of this world. And so, you can just kind of kind of graze around the table, have your favorite appetizer that I'd serve up to you, and we'd be able to kind of talk and and visit at the same time. Awesome. And I Hopefully do. That's I not disappointing. We didn't go entree, but we went. No, that's great. I love it. I love the, I love the appetizer idea. That's awesome. And I do, I remember standing around your kitchen island snacking and just talking about leadership and having my mind blown. It was great. It was awesome. Um, so, so now I actually have more questions because you made me think of another one, but I want to ask, and I know this isn't where we were going. So, so let me just ask you this question and then we can kind of go on from there. But you mentioned with your resume, how you've had you know, more jobs than anyone that they had seen and the richness of that experience. And I want to ask you to speak to that a little bit. Um, I remember years ago uh, when I was, you know, new in ministry and in leadership, we had someone really, truly amazing come in to do some leadership development with us. But I'll never forget one of the things that he said, I was asking about, you know, our generation, this next upcoming, you know, generation of rising leaders, you know, and it's kind of the millennials. I'm right on the borderline, but, you know, the millennial generation. What do we need to know? What, you know, what do we need to do? And the one thing that he said was, um, he said that generation from his perspective needs more commitment that you see young people kind of jumping around from job to job. And and we have the opportunity to do, you know, everybody's got a side hustle. Everybody's got their, you know, little Instagram business on the side and, and it's just a completely different world. And so I understood where he was coming from the idea that we need to plant ourselves somewhere and be committed to that. And, you know, even even when it gets difficult, even when it gets hard, even when it gets challenging, there's a power in staying in something. Um, But part of me also thought, you know, what a amazing opportunity it is that our generation has to actually have access to different um, experiences. And so I wonder if you could maybe speak to that a little bit Um, Mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, talk about the the importance of commitment and staying power, but also the the benefit of taking advantage of lots of different rich experiences. How has that impacted and affected you? And maybe um, could you also speak a little bit to like, what is the process of wisdom and discernment to know, you know, when it is the right time so that we're kind of bouncing around to all these experiences Mm -hmm. with a purpose, you know, we're doing it as the Lord leads, but knowing that there's actually some, some goodness in that. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a lot there and very, very cool thing. So we may end up going through this talk with me continually referencing, you know, one of my jobs as an example, that'll get interesting if we do that. But you know, I spent a lot of time in talent acquisition. So, um, you know, working in companies, uh, recruiting all the way to being 100% commission as a recruiter, as an occupation, right? And a very rich um, experience in the sense that you, you know, you really have to know people and, um, you, you, you know, you can't force people to do things. It's about matchmaking. And so a lot of listening and that sort of thing. And you also meet a lot of unhappy people that are trying to change their lives and, and um, floundering and doing it, right? So mm-hmm. I, I think a couple principles that stand out to me on your topic are, um, you know, first, I, I, I just have this strong inclination that we, we as a society work too hard to force our young people to make too important decisions too soon, mm. right? So we way undervalue ex- exploration, I think, when it, when it comes to discovering gifts, um, discovering passions, um, and, 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 and we, you know, we, we kind of promote needing to channel people in because it's a long road, and the sooner you get started, the more you get, you know, get, 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 ex, get experience, get the education you need and that sort of thing. And, and, you know, I can tell you, there's a huge percentage of people that arrive at 40 years old and hate what they're doing and they wonder how they got there, you know? And so on the one end, I feel like 
you know, a lot of people that don't get time or don't have mentoring about the value of, um, you know, dipping your toe in a, in a lot of things. Now I'm a big fan for making those experiences purposeful Mm -hmm. and focused. And, and that, uh, you know, my favorite saying is I counsel people that are in tough spots with companies and really having a hard time. They're like, you know, what, you know, I don't know if I should stay or go and all this. And I said, you know, you, you, you know, you, you need to stay there until you can't stay there. Right. And, and, and the kind of the focus of that is, you know, you've got to give a hundred percent where you are until you can't give a hundred percent where you are. And, and, you know, and that might be hard to discern the first time around, but maybe by the second or third, you probably have had experiences you know, when it's like, you, you know how to start paying attention to your heart and your spirit about mm-hmm. season changing, you know, but what about, you know, what about 21 year olds? I mean, it's tough. Right. And, yeah. um, I, you know, I think I've, I've learned so much about, um, you know, about uncovering gifts. Um, I just don't buy into that's a, that's a 40 year or a 50 year trajectory. You know, you, you know, your gifts can mature and change over time, but, I think we would be wise to invest in the younger generation to, you know, mentor on discovery yeah. and, and say, Hey, what, you know, how can we discern what your gifts are sooner? How can you go on that exploration? Um, you know, and if you obviously add the spiritual level to it, we're all called, um, you know, we're all called to serve. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're 12 or you're 112, the story and the place might be different, but you're a unique person. And, um, you know, to tell, to tell kids like we're, we're going to sit you in a classroom for, you know, for 18 years before we give you permission, um, you know, to start validating that that which you've kind of walked through a couple of doors already is, is the real deal. I think sets a lot of people up for disaster, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, and they spend years and years and years trying to figure out how to unravel that. Yeah. Does that makes sense. It does. And it's completely reframing my parenting right now. Like I'm just thinking about <laughs> how I'm raising my kids and the yeah. experiences, you know, and the opportunities that we're giving them. And, and I love what you said, how we force young people to make two important decisions too soon when they're still exploring and experiencing left to do. I love that. How would you, so you mentioned, um, you know, dipping your toe in a lot of different pools and how there's great value in that, but of course to make it purposeful, what does that really look like for someone who's uh, listening at whatever age, whether it's a younger person at the beginning of the journey or someone who is saying, yeah, I am stuck. I ended up at age 40 and hate what I'm doing. And now I'm trying to kind of rediscover and experiment a little bit. Um, What are some of the things that you would mentor or advise someone to do in order to actually make those experiences purposeful and intentional? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, the way I feel about some of this is then what are some of the underlying qualities and behaviors that we want, you know, we want to um, grow and mature. And one of those would be like work ethic and, Mm -hmm. and focus and attention and, um, you know, an open mindset to learn, right? Um, Those sorts of things. Um, Can we cultivate that in a new experience? And can we even uh, continue to cultivate that when, things aren't feeling all warm and fuzzy like they were in week two. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And that's part of that formula, you know, you're called to be there until you're not called to be there anymore. Right. And that, that goes all the way until the last day until you transition out that you're not called to be there anymore. Um, and so, you know, um, common in our society, workplace society is, you know, somebody's uh, behaviors dropping off with their unhappiness, right? And so, you know, I, li- I like to really coach uh, that maybe that's not how we're called to, you know, to perform. I think the other principle is, you know, to get the most out of these experiences, work hard to find, um, you know, a mentor in that, in that environment, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we really promote being strong individuals, right? Being solo uh, performers, like I, w- I want to earn my merits on this team. So I, what, you know, I'm my own individual and we really don't do a good job coaching. Say one of the most beneficial things you can do is out of these five people, find the one you connect with the most. All right. Mm-hmm. Ask them a lot of questions, tag along with them, 
pick their brain, watch how they, how they navigate. Like you have a guide, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not all about you just doing this on your own and, and hoping that you, you, you get the most out of this experience. You know, if you interview people that really talk about great growth experiences, they will always attach it to another person that, that they were, they were stepping right behind or right beside. And, Mm -hmm. and so I love, I love coaching that even, even high school kids or, or college kids that are doing things like find a person, yeah. you know, you know, find a person. And even if you can't find somebody right in that company, find a person in a different company in the same space. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're talking about not knowing everything there's to know. So like, it's very intuitive to say, what's my path to get over that hurdle It's probably through another person. Mm-hmm. You know? and so. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I'm so a big fan of that. And that's why, that's why I'm just championing apprenticeship right now as well, just as a, as a model. Um, you, you know, I'm blessed to have a son-in-law that works in the trade and it's, it's brought me all the way back to the value that the trades incorporate in career pathing about apprenticeship, right? Yeah. It's a word that's used commonly there and it's not used very many other places, Mm-mm. But it's a phenomenal model, and it always is about two people. Yeah. Apprenticeship yeah. is always about more than yourself. And I think we're, we'd be wise to really embrace that again. That's really good. Yeah, that's given me a lot to think about. And, of course, brings up even more questions, too. Um, so let me ask you this real quick, then. As someone who has sought out many mentors and, um, Mm -hmm. who has mentored many people for someone who says, Oh gosh, yeah, I need that. I need that apprenticeship experience, but how do I even start that conversation? What are some of the things to consider when you are going to approach someone and ask them to mentor you and invest in you? What are Mm -hmm. kind of like the right ways to do it? And maybe the wrong (laughs) ways to do it, maybe the not so good ways to do it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I think the way I've learned it is by kind of just doing what we're talking about, like, you know, watching and listening to how other people forge relationships that that became that type of experience. I think the very best mentors will will um, show signs of future investment if you if you kind of keep your eyes and ears open for them. Now, of course, if we're talking about young people, these are soft skills that you know we might not inherently have, but you know something as simple as asking a question and seeing the demeanor and the depth of the answer you get. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you have this experience all the time when you know somebody reaches out to you and like um, you, you know they're inquisitive about something and. Uh, you know, right away, you're making a decision about an investment level, right? Mm -hmm. And somebody on the other end is like, wow, that way was more than what I was thinking it would be. And wow, she was so gracious with her time. And wow, she really put some thought, she, you know, she, that was really deep, you know, so right away, they're kind of registering, wow, I would go there again, right? As opposed to no, is the answer to your question. It's no, you know, and that's probably right, but it was like, okay, hmm, I'm not sure if that's a rich place to go for a wealth of information. So I think testing, you know, testing the waters um, is is really hard for young people because, you know, a a bad experience, just like for all of us, bad experiences um, have a bigger impression on us sometimes than good experiences, right? And so what that happens when we have a bad um, you know, probing, a uh, hopeful mentor experience is that it makes us more um, resistant to, to tr- continue to try that with other people. We start mm-hmm. thinking, well, everybody's that way. So here I go, I'm going to fly solo. So I, I, th- I think that's part of it. Um, as we mature, I'm a big fan for really kind of promoting vulnerability as a test. You know, because great people that love to invest in other people will recognize vulnerability, right? And so if you share something and it gets glossed over or even gets rebuked or it doesn't get appreciated, that's a right away my call sign is like, that's not my well I'm going to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because good mentors are really equipped well, right? They're in the people investment business. And so mm-hmm. we should see signs of just outflowing people investment things, right? And so, um, yeah, so I think I think those are a couple of my kind of call signs. Uh, 
I kind of promote everybody just wears a sign on their, on their chest. That would make it easy <laughs> for all of us, wouldn't it? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm, you know, so I'm, look, I'm looking for a mentor. Come, please. I'm looking <laughs> Somebody for mentor, mentor me, mentor. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't happen that way usually, right? <laughs> Have the signs on. No, that's good. You know, some of the things that I think about, um, especially when I was younger and I was really beginning to ask people, Hey, will you please pour into me and invest in me? Yeah. Some of the things that I think about is, um, you know, making myself available, my lack of availability or, or my lack of awareness that, Hey, this is mentorship. Like you said, it really is apprenticeship. And so I need to be available and being really, really clear. I had to learn how to be incredibly clear and specific about what I was asking for. Like, Hey, this mm -hmm. is the level of investment that I'm asking you to make. This is the amount of time, you know, really my friend, uh, Steph calls it, uh, defining the relationship. You know, she's like every relationship, even a mentor relationship, you know, needs to have a moment where you kind of clearly define like, hey, this is how we're engaging with one another. This is how we're relating to one another. Um, and being able to do that from the beginning, say, hey, look, here's what I see in your life. Here's what I see the evidence of. I would love for you to share that experience with me. And, and I'm going to make myself available. And I'm going to take you out. I'm going to pay. I'm going to take you out for coffee mm -hmm. or lunch or, you know, whatever, once yeah. a week or once a month. And I had to learn to be really clear and really specific about what I was asking for. That's um, great. Yeah, that's great. That's such a mature, um, that's a really mature perspective and, and, uh, an approach, you know, I, I think when I see good pairings, um, you know, there's two elements. I mean, it's a, it's a relationship. So, so, you know, the perspective of, I, I need to be in a growing frame of mind as a, as a person, like mm -hmm. one of my goals, like not just do work and, and, um, you know, pursue, but I need to grow. So I, that has to be a conscious endeavor. And of course, as a mentor, you have to say, I'm, uh, I'm willing to invest in growing people, like helping mm -hmm. people grow. So, you know, that sounds so basic and simple, except it's rare. It's, mm -hmm. it's rare that the, you know, I mean, I, I coach so many leaders about just getting that idea out of their brain to say, you have to, you have to act like you want to grow. Mm -hmm. like you, you, that should, that should be evident. You're trying to do this all on your own. Right. right. And you've probably gotten this far on your own merits. So good, good on you, but now you're at a ceiling level and it's causing mm -hmm. you problems. So how, how can we creatively in the next two weeks come up with ways that you advertise that you're interested in growing and it's amazing somebody 40 years old uh, it's like a brand new experience it's like oh yeah. that feels awkward it's like well let's get awkward then because <laughs> it's the only way you're going to attract a five-star mentor that's also doing the same thing like you know i only have 24 hours in a day mm -hmm. and i'm praying i'm listening but my radar's open who is open to yeah. growing right yeah, right. where it's going to, you want to see a return on that investment. A a absolutely. I mean, yeah. we all have heartache of knowing somebody needs us and we can't help them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or we can't contribute to them and it's just the wrong season, wrong time, whatever. And um, and so, yeah, it's a wonderful marriage that happens, but, um, you know, it, ta it takes two people, right? Yeah. Um, all in this, both in the same frame of mind for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's good. Something else I want to ask you about when you were answering the food question, um, yeah. you mentioned that uh, even more than the food, you really care about the environment, the atmosphere. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask you to speak to the importance of that a little bit. I think so often, um, and, and maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I'm guessing there's a lot of people who can relate. When you are more leadership and strategic oriented, um, it can often get very heady, you know, very focused on the no. practical stuff and the strategic stuff and the academic stuff, but there's an emotional component to leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, it's, we have to be holistic about it. Um, so whether we're talking about our teams, our staff, you know, our, even just our friends, whatever, however we're gathering and, and investing, can you just talk a little bit about the emotional side of leadership and the importance mm -hmm. of environment and atmosphere? And what does that actually look like practically to create a good, healthy one? Yeah. Well, something like a, a fun time having a meal with you, um, it, you know, is different than, uh, you know, sitting in and getting thrust into a team meeting that's in trouble. But some of the principles are the same, actually. And, you know, it's very difficult to 
uh, to do work and and lead without um, a level of safety and trust, you know, with the people you're working with. Like I could be the smartest person in the world, and and and, and that being a, a, a known element, and you and I connect, and in a moment it means nothing because you you you're not feeling safe enough to even dialogue, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's intimidation or any other perceptions. And so it doesn't matter how good I am. We're not going to be able to connect and do work, right? So um, safety and, and, and trust, you know, um, working on the environment to start to build that up. I mean, the, the, the very first level, if we're sitting around an island, for instance, and chatting, and there's, say, there's eight of us, and there's one person that's, that's really reserved and not kind of feeling the vibe at all, right? There's, you know, you know, what do we need to do to build the first level of, of just inclusion? Like, hey, by the way, Mary, you, you know, you are part of this group. You know, or how can we make sure to convey that, you know, we're, we're being able to affirm and you can affirm that you feel like you're part of this group. I mean, that's a, you know, that's very, the very first step where we start to lean in a little bit then in a different level of investment. And the next level of investment is being comfortable enough and safe enough to, to kind of peel one layer back and say, I'm, la- I'm able to lean in and learn. Mm-hmm. So I can be a learner. You know, Timothy Clark does just some great, great work around this of the psychological of the the psychology of safety and trust um, in business because, I mean, it kind of goes from there, um, you know, to be able to contribute. That's a massive leap. You know, think about before where we're at the island and we're not really chipping in at all because we don't feel included. You're never going to contribute if you don't even feel included, Mm -hmm. right? And the last one then is to really feel comfortable enough to challenge, you know, in a safe, ethical way. You know, we need to be in a group and be comfortable that we can challenge each other with statements. Like, mm-hmm. it's not about right or wrong. It's just like, I have a different opinion and it's safe enough for us to talk about that. And we get into that environment, then then it's kind of like all the armor's off yeah. and we can, go, we can go to work, yeah. you know? That's and it's good. it's a really important team dynamic because I get thrust into teams all the time and they're stuck and they can't resolve things and, and the work slows down mm-hmm. and the creative juices stop and it's like, what's going on with our team? And it's so easy to come and come to, well, this person's kind of at the inclusion level and that person can't contribute. And so we got to take some steps backwards and work on the environment, build mm-hmm. that up because everybody has the capability of, of operating at that level, just nobody feels safe enough to do it. Right. Right. That's good. And, you know, I think I feel it with the few teams that I have worked with, I have seen, um, when we're talking about volunteer teams, whether it's a, you know, a nonprofit or a parachurch or whatever it is, volunteer teams, I feel like in my experience, usually do this well, a little bit better because, you know, they, they know that these people are volunteering to be part of this. And so valuing them is so important. I feel like when it comes to a staff, I've actually seen less of a focus on, um, you know, the emotional side of things, the holistic side of things, building safety and trust, because basically, well, you're, you're paid to be here. So when you show up, you show up with your whole self. And I just think, Nope. Just because when you're paying someone to be there, yeah, there's a certain level of expectation, of course, but that paycheck doesn't automatically earn their their trust, their safety, right. their inclusion. That that takes work. And just having someone as part of a staff doesn't automatically mean that there's equity and equality yep. there. No, you're so spot on. And the word expectation is such a, it's just a spot on word to use in that because we, you know, we can have expectations mask Mm -hmm. um, the, the real work of making sure we're cultivating the right environment for gifts to be demonstrated. Right. Mm -hmm. So expectations don't do anything Mm -hmm. uh, in that regard. You know, it's like this fake rule, like, um, so just, just perform. It's like, well, I can't, you know, this is just not, this is stifling and everything. So still, you still have the obligation to, um, you know, to build and model and operate the culture that, that helps everybody's gifts be manifested. Right. And, you know, volunteers can be interesting because um, you're you're exactly right. We're, we're graced with the contribution. So Mm -hmm. um, we're often thankful for that, but sometimes um, that, uh, you know, that gets over indexed and what gets missed 
then is right placement, yeah. right, of volunteers, right? So thank you for the time. So you've given us your time. That's that's awesome. But sometimes then in the volunteer, we miss the part about are you safe enough to, um, you know, to offer your your unique contribution? And mm-hmm. I'm going to be smart enough to say, I'm not just going to put you in a spot because we're dealing with the commodity of time. I'm interested in putting you in the best spot for you because you're unique and you have gifts that we need. Yeah. So it's just kind of a different level of expectations. Sometimes, of course, you know, both sides of those uh, have very rich and functional examples as well that we could uh, we could reference and just learn from. That's good. So yeah. you've talked. To, well, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you. Of course, I've taken us off into left field a little bit, oh, good, um, good. which which is great. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, what is it that you feel like you really bring to the leadership table? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, probably maybe two things, I think, over the past, uh, you know, five to 10 years that have just continued to, you know, well up and bloom. And I think the first one is um, a real dedication to, you know, a coaching concept in leadership, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And, and, you know, we don't have to get wrapped up in vernacular, really, but, you know, um, you know, coaches are in the business of of helping other people perform, you know, to their fullest uh, capabilities and, mm-hmm. and, and co-participating, helping in that. If we think of any other example of coach, you know, there's a difference between a coach and a teacher in the tactics, mm-hmm. right? And I, I've just lived through so many experiences being, you know, coming in contact with some great stuff, great content, great books, great authors, great uh, information, but being tooled terribly on how to, you know, operate it in my life and put it into motion. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of going to a conference and just having this, you know, this pinnacle moment of just, you know, just blessed with some great stuff. And then two weeks later, you're like, I I can't like get any of that going. It's mm-hmm. so frustrating, right? And so coaching for me is is just a different tactical um you know a lever and saying mm-hmm. like the work is what we need help with, not the information. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So the information is our starting spot. And so we're we're nodding our head. We see value in that. Great, great, great. So let's try. Let's let's do an activity or practice a skill. Uh it didn't work. Okay, well, we're not done then. Like, like, let's figure this out. Like, we got to figure out how to practice this skill because we already said that we agree with the content and we see value there. So coaching, I'm, I'm just way up on coaching, right? And I love it. Um, I think I've been coaching all the way since I was a captain of my football team in high school, to be honest with you, because you're linking with people and co-investing and bringing the best out of people, right? Yeah. And so that's just fun work. I think the other thing that that I think I I feel a little bit unique about is is the quest for people to discover their just their greatest gift, their greatest version of themselves, right? Mm-hmm. And and this quest not to settle where most of us probably are or have been, which is navigating well enough. Mm-hmm. Like like there's some people that are navigating terribly. That, that's sad, and and there's some of that. the The far majority of the people, at least that I've been around my entire life, um, are 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 finding a way to get through, mm-hmm. and get through in the sense of who they decide to be every day. Mm-hmm. Like I can function, I can contribute, I have a job, I'm maybe I'm married, I have a partner, I've got a family, I, I'm I'm playing my role, I'm getting through, and. Um, that is not why we were created. No. Like we, you know, we are quest to do the work to say what what is the unique part of me that the world is waiting for and God bestowed on me mm-hmm. to be my puzzle piece in the world in in, in my service. Yeah. Right. That's that's being great. And, and great not to, uh, to get applause, but great because God created great. <laughs> and I'm going to be what God created, you know, and it takes discovery. And so, you know, the I think the work of 
um, helping people unravel that because most mm -hmm. of the time we, you know, we're our own worst enemy. We've kind of done things to bury it. And, and, and then, you know, if there's some things we have to practice, so we all have things to practice, but then go find where we're supposed to deliver that. And it yeah. doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes it could be occupation, but it can be volunteer. It's like, I mean, that's the best way to find out if a, if a, a something we're volunteering has even a career potential because go practice it for free. Right. Go right. do follow your heart and find a place to do that that people value and practice doing that for free. And maybe something will come out of it or you just keep giving it away. It doesn't really matter. But don't just be enough. Mm. Right. And, yeah. and so I think those two things are just my life's pursuit right now mm -hmm. and coming up with tools and avenues and forums. Um, to really tackle those two things has been yeah. a, a, a rich path so far. So I know this is probably, you know, we could do episode after episode of this. I mean, this is a process that you work with people on and, and it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not just a, a one hit kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to this, you've talked a lot about discovering your gifts and, and what you're talking about right now. Is there any kind of like first level practical application, maybe starting points that you could offer? I mean, I know, like I said, I know it's a really extensive yeah. type of thing, but how could we, uh, for someone that's listening right now who wants to jump on that and just needs to kind of be pointed in the right direction to begin that process, what are some of the things that you would offer? Yeah, it's, it's actually my favorite part of, uh, of being able to interact with people. Because, I mean, it could be somebody... I mean, just the whole spectrum, right? I, I, mm -hmm. I, there was a, uh, a young gentleman I was working with this week, and he, I mean, he was really at the point. He says, I don't think I do anything good. Um, I don't even know where to start. Like, I feel unhappy, and I, I'm doing okay with what I'm doing, um, but I don't want to do this forever, and I don't even know. You know, it's just like empty slate, right? Like, it was probably the most blank um piece of tapestry that I've ever come across in this quest. And, and, and we were just talking about starting this. And so all kinds of activities you can do, but it, in the simplest form, it could be journaling about um, really being tuned in to what people compliment you on, for instance, okay. something as simple as that. Now that sounds almost like an uncomfortable way. And I can tell you for this gentleman, this is going to be a very, very difficult exercise because you know, he's gotten himself so worked up to where he doesn't think he has value. So he mm -hmm. clearly isn't listening to anybody, mm -hmm. right? He's not even, he doesn't even have the celebratory moments to hear any of those things, even if they're going on. So we're, we're going to have to, like, we'll probably have to build on that. But that's a simple exercise. It's like, you know, people recognize gifts, even if mm -hmm. you don't action on them. And so mm -hmm. something like a compliment I think things that we journal about that we uh, we um, remember having great joy in doing, mm -hmm. you know, we think of them as luxuries or we think of them as only fun or we think of them as these one-off high pinnacle moments. They're worth looking at. Mm -hmm. And we go through exercises where it's like, okay, you told me about that experience. Awesome. And you can tell they're like, oh, it was a happy memory. All right, this week, you you gotta you gotta put write the screenplay for that event to me, all right? You got a journal. I want emotion. I want all the characters. I want the year. I want the setting. We're gonna go back there and really replay it, all right? Because I can promise you, there's some elements in there that aren't there by accident. Yeah, they're not there by accident. They're there as little hints that this is where you're supposed to be spending some more time. Mm -hmm. You know, and so simple activities like that where we we invest some quiet time in 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 and thinking, going back, recultivating some things is a very hard work for some people because we work hard to bury a lot of things for all kinds of reasons. But some of those sorts of things, if we're in work environments as simple as just, you know, really be aware of what you see in here. You know, what, what was the one thing you took greatest enjoyment of today, right? Mm -hmm. We don't give ourselves permission to think that we could do that which we love the most, the most. Yeah. It almost seems like a rule that doesn't, could never be true. So but you have to be yeah. miserable in what you're doing basically for it to be valid. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I get one little drop of water. That's how my life's supposed to be. Like mm. who, who said that? Like mm -hmm. clearly God has shown you that you really enjoy that. Where yeah. in the Bible does it say that that's like, he's in the constant teasing business. I, mm -hmm. I never found it. 
we've just conditioned ourselves to say these are these are just little moments that we get once in a while. Like go there and really investigate it. And what is it that you love about that? Who else are, is around you when you're doing those things? What other impact did you have on people when you when you're in that space? Um, these are just little starting you know, starting exercises, you know, and uh, getting people more comfortable to exploring, you know, the why and, and that sort of thing. Again, the, what's the whole goal? We're a unique piece of puzzle. I don't know if you've done any puzzles during this time. We've done a lot around here. So we I got puzzles yes. on my brain right now. Yes, we've and been doing lots thousand, of quarantine puzzles. <laughs> if you have a thousand piece puzzle on the table uh, and you haven't put one piece together yet, it's a hot mess. Mm-hmm. And when you're done, it's awesome. You have a sense of accomplishment and it looks cool. The picture you've been looking at for a week, maybe, who knows how long. There's nothing different. There's nothing different except every piece found its spot. Mm. That's the difference. Like a jumbled mess in a box or everything's done on the table, every piece is playing its role and no piece can play some other piece's role. And you know, I just love the experience of getting our ourselves wrapped around that and being up and healthy enough for the voyage of discovery of that. Yeah, that is so good. That just that every piece has found its spot. I feel like that's just the mm-hmm. that's the mic drop moment right there. Mm-hmm. That's that's awesome. Um, so I want to ask you what, with, with that in mind, I want to ask you one final thing before we wrap up. And obviously yeah. we've talked about the importance of, you know, having mentors and, and things like that. Is there, so for someone, what you just offered, I think was fantastic. All those different things to, to journal and what sparks joy and what moments, you know, in life have really made you come alive for someone who has kind of done that work already who kind of has a little bit of an idea of, okay, this is what I'm interested in. This is what I'm passionate about. Um, these are some of the gifts that I think God has, you know, maybe given me and they're at the point of they've done the beginning work of discovery, but now they're kind of at the next stage of like, okay, I've got this. How do I, like, I know all my pieces and I'm ready to start putting them together now. What is there a, a piece of practical advice or even just a word of encouragement that you might give to someone at that kind of jumping off point? Yeah. So, yeah. So I, yeah, I love that too. We, you know, we have some people that we connect with and we don't put, you know, I'm not into putting people in boxes because I think it's kind of a fluid operating system all the time. And when I say boxes, I'm th- kind of thinking of, you know, discovery as, as a space and then, and then development as a space and then yeah. delivery as a space, I guess if I were to use that vernacular, but that's fluid, right? Cause mm-hmm. even what we just talked about, um, can change. We can go through a new, a new place of passion and a mm-hmm. developing passion. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so those seasons contain, but I think when you feel in your heart, like you're really wrapped around, uh, your gifts, like mm-hmm. this just rings true. Like you're just celebrating knowing who you are is, is kind of a cool moment. Um, <clears throat> but then it's like, are there some tools that maybe I need to sharpen, uh, to be the ber- best version of that going forward? And there's like all kinds of ways to kind of test that out. Like, how do, how do we perform when we go out? Like, um, you know, we're happy and we feel like we're pointed in our true North. Um, but we still have some, you know, some, uh, bad experiences maybe, or, or something that frustrated us or disappointed, you know, draw attention to those things and say, what, what might need to get sharpened for us to be, um, you know, the best version of that, right? Mm -hmm. The best piece in the puzzle. uh, Now that we know we belong to that puzzle. Um, And and there's all kinds of opportunities in that. Most of the people I work in, we're spending time in that space of development. All right. And that's the space where coaches really come into play. Like we're only interested in progress. Like mm-hmm. that's the game. Like, you know, you're, you're here and, you know, God aspires you to be here. So let's go to work. Like yeah. let's go to work, right? The decision-making, uh, difficult conversations, um, uh, you know, creativity and under stress. I mean, what, all kinds of things, like where are the opportunities there? So we, we can go to work, practice skills, mm-hmm. like practice skills that we know contribute to those things get them to be more comfortable so that that we build behaviors, right? And mm-hmm. behaviors become things we don't have to think so hard about. They're just natural, all right? Yeah. And 
And probably all of us have a couple of those all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I know I do a couple times 10, but you know, um, but so that's a a big part of it. And then we kind of have this quest to say, I'm so hungry now to serve. And that can, doesn't happen necessarily in that order. We can kind of do those things simultaneously, but a lot of people are challenged with, I don't think I'm doing it in the right place, or I don't think I'm, I'm doing it in the, the fullest way my heart seems like it wants to. And so we just examine, uh, you know, let's redescribe delivery. Let's redescribe the breadth of our uh, community. Let's, um, you know, let's try to listen and see if we're missing the view of a need because we've been so focused on one project for a while or that's mm-hmm. that sort of thing, you know. Um, and, um, I think, I think those are opportunities. Well, we do lots of activities where it's like, you gotta, you gotta come back to me and tell me a a predictable delivery and a, and a spontaneous delivery. You know, it's just exercising muscles of being aware. Like, right. It's amazing when you talk to people, it's like, when you, when you go through some of these exercises about delivery, their scenery hasn't changed at all. It's like, they've, they've, they've walked the same path to work. I mean, you've heard all these stories for five years, except this time they're noticing people that they, they can serve. And they're like, why? Well, I'm kind of focused. I'm now I'm insatiable about my quest to find my delivery. It's like, yeah. ah, you know, and fortunately God's hung in there with us because the same people are right there that he's placed in front of us for the past year sometimes, you know? And mm-hmm. so those are, those are just, um, you know, things it's about attention. Right. Yeah. And, and as we grow, we just have these opportunities to, um, you know, to kind of grow into those, uh, those, those stages of readiness, I think. Yeah, that's so yeah. good. I love those three things too: discovery, development and delivery. What an awesome way to just break it down. Well, yeah. I, I just want to say thank you so yeah. much, um, just for coming and for sharing all of this with us. And we are going to link, um, all of your stuff in the show notes. So anybody that's yeah. listening who says, gosh, I'd love to follow what Steve is doing, learn more, maybe get some coaching. Um, All of that will be in the show notes. Will you just, the last thing I'm going to ask you is why Jordan River Group? Can you uh, talk about the name of the company? Yeah, sure can. Um, It's funny because it usually comes up at this stage too, right? Uh, It's like, so, okay, so that that was a rich dialogue and I've so enjoyed talking to you too. And then somebody was so tell me about the name. So, um. You know, on, on the principles that we talked about, especially as far as, you know, already having within us, mm-hmm. you know, that that which can come out uh, and, and be unique and serve in a great way. Um, you know, there there's, you know, there's lots of biblical examples, by the way, but, you know, um, you know, Moses bringing the Israelites out of, out of slavery and, mm-hmm. and having lots of conversations with God about a promised land that, that he had provided for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, so it kind of liken, you know, that kind of experience a lot of us have, because what happened to Moses and the, the other tribes was like, uh, you know, kind of once they saw it, uh, it was like, yeah, that's, that's probably impossible. Like that's not for us. Or why'd you bring us here? Because, we're not capable of that. Right. And, you know, that vernacular even just resonates with me because I've said those words lots of times, you know, and, um, and so, you know, so God, you know, God, uh, you know, God told them that, uh, Hey, um, I already had given it to you, but you're going to have to wait a whole generation now. And, and Joshua was the person down the road that was able to, um, take a people to a place that God had already gifted them. Mm-hmm. Nothing, nothing changed except their ability to say, Oh, I, I guess because of you, God, I do have within me what, you know, what, what you said was our destiny. And uh, so that, I think that philosophy just repeats itself over and over and over, you know, in some of the coaching we do, it's not about teaching somebody something new that's just been developed out here. And we hope that you connect and, and, and your quest to, uh, to, you know, to attach yourself to something that rings true to you. It's more about peeling back and, and discovering what's actually already here. It was here when you were six mm-hmm. and it's here because you're 66. It's, it's here, but we, we have to discover it. So crossing the Jordan River is, is a coaching metaphor about that voyage, 
you know, mm-hmm. going where you were already capable of going. Mm. We, just, we just have to tool ourselves in doing that. I think, um, you know, I had two daughters, as you know. Um, my first daughter um, was uh, passed away in a car accident, you know, about four years ago. And the thing we all remember about her is she, even at a young age, she was 23, you know, and, you know, she, she embodied that is like, I, I know, you know, I know who I am and I'm in a pursuit to just um, touch people's lives and manifest that. I don't, you know, I, she was scholarly and, and, and academic. So she was all about learning, but she was already living past her, her learning. Yeah. Uh, challenging for parents, by the way, that kind of profile for sure. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, her, her name was Jordan as well. So, um, you know, we just feel blessed to be able to have a, uh, you know, a company name that we feel has a couple meanings in a, in a legacy in a spiritual way to, and kind of embody the, the, the type of work that we, um, we hope to accomplish and feel called to, to participate in. Mm, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. There's so much richness in, in this conversation. And I know we went so many different directions, but yeah. I just love how <laughs> it's so funny that you started off by saying how much you love appetizers. Cause I kind of feel like that's the conversation <laughs> with people like that's- here's five different little plates and, and there's something really good on each of them and just grab the one that, you know, that resonates with you the most. So absolutely. The thing I love about appetizers is there's no order. There's no order. You don't have to follow any rules. Like have three mushrooms in a row if you want to. It doesn't (laughs) matter. (laughs) Right? Oh, That's kind of what we did. So I love it. And that's what we did before, if you remember, right? We just went, we just kept going. And, um, you you know, that's so rich. So it's been a pleasure. It's been so fun to chat with you and just uh, to share questions and answers together. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for being on. I know that this is, this has touched a lot of people listening. And so I just, I appreciate it from all of us. I just say, thank you. Mm, You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to the table leadership podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the resources that were discussed at the table today and to connect with today's guest. Remember to subscribe to The Table Podcast and follow along on social media at The Table Leadership. Visit thetableleadership.com to learn more about current courses and coaching opportunities. And finally, you can connect with me, your host, at cionedgerton.com or on social media at cionedgerton. I look forward to the next time that you pull up a seat at The Table.